almost complete. Thank you. And let us now please take a seat as we move on to our first IEF Global Networking Forum session. In several regions of the world, we've seen an interest in federating, nas federating national space agencies in order to create regional space agencies to harness synergies and coordinate spa space activities. To mention just examples like the, space, uh, the European Space Agency, the African Space Agency, and also in Latin America and the Caribbean initiative was launched to create a Latin American and Caribbean Space Agency. And this session will now focus on this initiative and I'm very pleased to welcome on stage again the moderator of this session, uh, Varanathan Munsami, the GEC 2022 IPC co-chair. Well, the floor is yours. Thank you, Christian, and, and good afternoon to everyone. Um, I think this particular session on the Latin American and Caribbean Space Agency uh, holds very uh, particular interest for me. Uh, for a very specific reason, uh, a few years ago I was chairing the African Union Space Working Group that developed the African Space Policy and the Space Strategy. So there was a move in Africa to set up an African Space Agency, very similar to what's happening right now in Latin America. And when I kind of recall back the kind of emotions that was running uh, as we were developing that, there were the two very divergent sort of emo emotions. The one that was very daunting in a sense that we had to deal with very different political agendas. There's 55 countries in Africa, four different languages, or main languages that's spoken, French, English, Arabic, and Portuguese. And that's not even counting the local indigenous languages. And then you had to look at the diverse cultures. So that was very daunting in itself. But I think what was exhilarating on the other side is the fact that we were setting up a space program and it was very technically focused. And there we could find convergence and resonance in terms of finding a common agenda at a technical level. And just coming back to today's conversation around a Latin American and Caribbean space agency, there has been some developments on, in the region. Uh, in fact, there's been an agreement that's been floating around for countries to commit towards the establishment of a Latin American and Caribbean uh, space agency. And to date, I'm told that there's five countries that have signed up and just so that you know, there's 33 countries in the African and Caribbean um, region. And in order for the agreement to be ratified and come into effect, you need 11 countries from the region to sign up. So that means we're still short of another six more countries to sign up before this becomes a reality. So I'm actually glad that we have an esteemed panel of experts that can talk to the subject this afternoon, and some of them are right in the center fold of this development in the region. And to my immediate left is um, Ambassador Gustavo Cabrera. Um, he's the uh, Mexican ambassador uh, to the Latin American and Caribbean Space Agency. And then it's uh, Alejandro Roman. He's the Director General of the Aerospace Development of Paraguayan Space Agency. And then to his left is uh, Veronica Gomez. She's the um, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ecuador, and then followed by um, Guillermo Salvatierra, uh, who is the member of Board of Directors of CONAI, that's the Argentinian Space Agency, and then immediately to his left is Marianela Guzman. Um, she's the General uh, uh, Secretariat of the Andean um, Community, based in Peru. And so the format of the, this particular session is that each of the uh, panel members will just give a three to five minute introductory remark, and then we'll get into a set of questions, and then we'll field any questions that come from the floor. So I'm going to start off with you, Ambassador, uh, just to give you opening remarks, three to five minutes. Thank you. Good, Good afternoon, everybody. Um, that's OK, yeah. Well, thank you for invitation to Mexico, to ALCE. Well, the name in ALCE is uh, Spanish, American. Is, uh, so, sorry, Ambassador, can I just, um, we're going to allow for some of the panel members to speak in Spanish. If you want to follow the translation, you can pick up 
a translation machine just outside. Uh, I know some of the panel members are not very well versed in English, uh, so we want to try and accommodate that. Is that okay? Is it hybrid? Well, um, the, the, also, uh, the name in Spanish is La Agencia Latinoamericana y Caribeña del Espacio. The name in English is Latin LAXA, que es Latin American and Caribbean Space Agency. The last September, or September 2021, in Mexico City, a meeting for the SALAC uh, a meeting is uh, creation, according to creation, for the ALSI. In present, present in this city, uh, 25, 26 countries, and signed the uh, 19 signing countries in the LAXA Adhesion Agreement. And now, today, have a 22 countries uh, signed an Adhesion Agreement. Well, what is ALSE uh, or LAXA? Well, the, the, and the next is this, the name is uh, ALSE, sorry, uh, have a paper in English in the border principle. Well, is ALSE is uh, is agency or no substitution, no substitution, or any another agency. Is the creation for by basic for it will be an international organization to coordinate the cooperation activities for exploration, for research, space technology, and their application, contributing and strengthening an integral sustainable development and the space topic. This is the principal explication of what is LAX. Now, the, another complement uh, 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 important is the LAXA will be placed in Mexico and it may set the necessary office and representation for its operation in the territory of the member states. Now, have a have an office in Querétaro, is a state of north of Mexico, and have a building in the airport or cluster for aerospace in, in this state. Uh, and this, uh, this cluster have companies, very important companies, Airbus, Boeing, Safran, and another, others important countries. In this same cluster, have the office in the next month. The government of Mexico have uh, the operation, this office of the first or two years for the beginning. What is the mi uh, mission of ALSE? ALSE is to be the regional mechanism for cooperation, collaboration, and ever uh, maybe important, more important is transfer among in experience and Latin American countries. This is the mission more cooperation and more exchange experience. For the exploration and use of the extraterrestrial space with Pacific purpose. This is more important. It's, it's with Pacific purpose. And the, and the vision is reach equal condition to promote development opportunities in the continent, strengthening the relationship among Latin American and Caribbean peoples. Well, LAXA have they begin any some actions. The very important is uh, creation of the institutional framework for space development in the region. And space activities to prioritize the protection and security of the population, region, and continent. To identify the public and private sectors in the areas of space activities and to generate the knowledge of capacities, allowing the development of satellites with own technologies and infrastructure. And to solve the criteria for the promotion of space activities in Mexico based on this scientific, economic, and social impact. This is activity of ALSE Mexico. I am ambassador um, for ALSE. Well, the last year I ambassador to Mexico in Nicaragua. Now this year is ambassador to Mexico and ALSE. Well, what is the goals of LAXE? 
is to promote the productivity change in both the industrial sector will the academic with the academic and another sectors this is very important have our four themes in the promotion the first the first theme is creation the net the net uh, all countries have information for projects investigation of the last well how uh, exchange and another countries of public information to create the net. This is very important for this first step. The second step is creation for uh, value of human capital. America, Latin America and Caribbean have people to prepare in all countries and all companies space. Well, I need a strategy for preparation and uh, human capital. This is the second, the second step. The human capital in all levels, the basic, uh, electricist, soldi soldier, uh, and other jobs, to high and astronaut or PhD in time space. This is the preparate for capacitation in Latin America. And criteria is certified or certified in all countries. Well, I have uh, um, human capital and um, country or Nicaragua or El Salvador or Colombia or other countries. Well, the capacity capacitation have for all continent. There's more opportunities for the job at the world. The third third term is the production. Uh, the last uh, speak is very important companies and what is the future of the companies and activities in the commercial and economic space. The production is the third step, is how or what uh, companies is very important in each country. In Mexico, have a project important I, the, the government no coordination with have a problems with uh, politic public in space to prepare a new political space is very important for Mexico now is more investigation more productions more uh, st uh, for the uh, companies and activity economic for the structure production this is very important inside in Mexico well, and other countries, and all continental is very important. Well, maybe uh, market free for materials in space industry. And the fourth thing is uh, information and diffus diffusion. The new generations, I need more information for space. Now, with the uh, app, apps of phone or smartphone is consumer every day well i need people consumer or creator the priority is creator is to prepare a new generation for distance this is the very important for the projects for us exchange between countries for projects of launchers satellite constructions telecommunications and systems exit uh, and systems uh, preference for the new uh, constructions of politic a public politic space this is the ALSE. well who uh, how in the beginning the activities uh, today uh, absignet uh, ratificated six countries at the world. I need 11. The next five is a few months uh, incorporated. And have 11 uh, countries convocated on to prepare uh, the first session to creation, legal creation and operation of ALSE. This is the few story of ALSE of September the last year or today. This is the information. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ambassador. And I think that's very important uh, 
in terms of setting up the strategic insight around ELSA. Um, I'll then move on to Ramon, uh, Alejandro. Just be mindful of our time. Uh, if we can keep within five minutes, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Uh, all, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, my name is Alejandro Roman. I'm representing the Paraguayan Space Agency. I wanted to share with you how is the emerging country aerospace uh, uh, space program looks like. And it's an example how the international cooperation can develop and uh, can accelerate uh, a developing in, in a country. We know that uh, we are in the, a very big space economy industry and more than 400 million dollars annually is moving this sector and our, our region is very low participation. We have just, uh, even the, the, the launch of the satellites are, are growing exponentially. The participation of the Latin American and Caribbean uh, in, in that sector is just the 1.6 percent. We are very low uh, represented and there is a very big opportunity to, to, to face this, uh, this uh, challenge. We are living in the changing world. We are living in uh, climate change and, and the pandemic change. The way we do things, the way we, we, we develop our, our, our work, our communications, and the satellites is providing a, a big amount of data that can be used by many countries, including and especially the emerging countries. That is, that is why it's very important to us to uh, introduce the benefits of space in uh, the telecommunications and air observations, in uh, positioning and navigation services, and in the research and production of, of knowledge with, with microgravity environment, and also the observation and exploration of the universe. And the Paraguayan Space Agency, I think uh, most of the emerging countries has uh, facing this uh, la low resources situation, and then uh, this, uh, cooperation and collaboration between the established uh, and grow uh, space agency in the region and worldwide uh, help us to develop um, and, and, and to bring solutions to our government to, to um, improve the lines of, of research in the universities and also to improve the productivity of the country. Uh, the Paraguayan Space Agency has two lines of development. Uh, one is the Earth Observation Applications and the other one uh, is uh, uh, the space uh, engineering, uh, basic space engineering development. And in Earth observation, we started with, uh, with the emergencies. We have a very big flooding affecting many, uh, more than 100,000 people. And after the flooding, we started with uh, wildfires. We have the help of the International Charter for Space and Major Disasters. And uh, in, in both cases, and we are working with many institutions in, inside the government of Paraguay and outside the, our country. We are accessing uh, many platforms like uh, CONAE here is in, 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 in this, in this uh, panel also with us, and also uh, INPE and the Copernicus uh, platform also. All these platforms are free, totally free. And for the people and the countries to use this data, they only need to know where to find the information and how to process that information. We also have a very big uh, help all from NASA, and we are developing a coordinated effort in our country to, 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 to better the response on the, on, in the case of disaster. After this, we will in, in insert uh, our plans in agriculture, Land, man land management, uh, resor natural resources management, and other and other uh, areas, and also in the health, we are working with the Ministry of Health in our country to develop solutions using space uh, science and technology. All this with zero investment. Um, let me just jump uh, quickly of uh, the the. The, the slides. Um, we are receiving um, a very important help from NASA. They give us a study of 20 years of uh, fires in Paraguay, and we, we send this study to uh, the Ministry of Environment and other institutions in our country. Um, we also are participating in regional projects in, in, in the UN COPUOS and also in the, here in the IAF and other uh, important institutions related to space like IAEA, RILACA, PDC and others. And we are investing very, very much efforts in training. There are many training uh, opportunities 
are totally free, available for all the countries, and especially for emerging countries. And we are working with more, more, more than 52 institutions, uh, national level and international level, uh, like I said, uh, with, with zero investment. In the development of basic engineering, we had just launched our first satellite. Let me jump here. From March 28, 2018 to uh, February, uh, 2021, we developed our first satellite. These are, those are our, our colleagues that uh, travel to Japan to develop a, a capacity building program in the university in Japan, and they developed our first satellite. And let me share with you a story. The launch, we, we, we have a television program uh, to transmit this uh, historical moment for our country. And this television program has uh, 3 million people view in a 7 million people country. This is a very big inspirational impact, and I think it's an example of how I say again, without zero or, or very low investment, we can put a different a difference in the society and we can inspire a younger generations. And let me jump a little bit um, in con do our time constraints. Um, the, our, our first satellite has a mission that uh, has to be with, with the, uh, the national public health situation. We are working the indigenous community. Uh, we have a disease that is, uh, the name is Chagas disease, and the satellite is helping us to, uh, with the help of the uh, um, ground-based uh, sensors, to detect the bug that transmits this disease, as, and this disease is not cured. There is no cure, we, we can only uh, wor work with the, with the um, uh, prevention side. And many institutions help us to develop this project um, on the national and international levels. And also, uh, let me just jump here. I'm finishing. Uh, and also we are uh, working to develop our own infrastructure. This is our Operation Monitor and Control Center in the Paraguayan Space Agency. And we, like I said, uh, we are working with the indigenous community and the, with uh, many universities in Paraguay. All this was possible thanks to the international cooperation. And we sent many students and young professionals to abroad to, to learn and then they come back to the country and develop, uh, developing, uh, they develop uh, technology in, in, in Paraguay. This is certificates of uh, satellite launch. Uh, Aleo, the time, yes, can, I'm can finishing. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we have presence in many, in many, in many uh, institutions and we have the projection of new alliance, new challenges and new projects. Um, from the perspective of the emerging countries, I think we still have many things to do. And I finish with this um, uh, slide, this space is for everyone, and it's imperative to leave no one behind. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Alejandro. Can I then move to Veronica for your presentation? We're running out of time very quickly. I can see the clock ticking. Thank up. you. Thank you, Bob. Um, allow me first to give you a warm welcome to our country. It's an honor to have you here, and I hope you can enjoy your stay in our beautiful city. Uh, now, I, if you allow me, I will switch to Spanish. And um, quisiera eh, iniciar diciendo que la, la creación de la Agencia Espacial Latinoamericana y Caribeña ha sido posible gracias a un proceso de muchos años de cooperación en la región, un proceso que comenzó a concretarse en noviembre del 2020 cuando en el plan de trabajo de la comunidad de estados latinoamericanos y caribeños se planteó como uno de los ejes de trabajo la cooperación espacial. Eh, a partir de este, de este año comenzamos a trabajar en el marco de la CELAC para construir esta cooperación y en este sentido, yo quisiera dar las gracias a México, que llevaba la presidencia de la CELAC, quien tuvo un impulso fundamental en este proceso. Posteriormente, los cancilleres reunidos eh, en el marco de la CELAC decidieron firmar una declaración política de apoyo a las actividades espaciales. 
Esta declaración es muy importante porque esta declaración representa el primer compromiso de la región para comenzar a trabajar en actividades espaciales y generar una red de cooperación que permita a todos los países, a pesar de sus diferencias, poder desarrollar actividades en este, en este marco. Posteriormente, eh, en el caso del Ecuador, nosotros lamentablemente no contamos con una agencia espacial, pero siempre hemos tenido un compromiso fundamental con el tema espacial, tanto en Naciones Unidas eh, y también en los temas de desarme del espacio. Y por esta razón, cuando el canciller mexicano hizo una llamada a mi canciller, eh, le pidió que nosotros contribuyéramos en este proceso. El Ecuador se convirtió en uno de los cuatro países que negociaron esta, este tratado y lo hicimos en un tiempo récord y debo decir que nos sentimos muy orgullosos de ello, porque comenzamos a, a trabajar en, en el mes de mayo del 2021, México, Costa Rica, Paraguay y Ecuador. Posteriormente se sumó República Dominicana eh, y otros países atendieron la negociación como observadores. Estos cinco países construimos lo que hoy conocemos como el Tratado Constitutivo de la ALCE, que es un proceso muy ambicioso, que tiene objetivos muy amplios, pero que nos va a permitir como región avanzar en la cooperación, que es lo que necesitamos para, para avanzar. Aparte de eso, nosotros estamos también auspiciando el proceso de ratificación del tratado, puesto que necesitamos 11 ratificaciones para que entre en vigor este tratado. Eh, tenemos actualmente creo que cinco. En el caso del Ecuador estamos en el proceso eh, eh, ya para entrar a la Asamblea Nacional y esperamos que pronto pueda ser aprobado. Y para finalizar rápidamente, solamente quería decir que eh, resaltar que este proceso no habría sido posible sin el compromiso regional, un compromiso de todos los países, de América Latina y del Caribe anglófono, eh, porque estamos convencidos de que la tecnología espacial va de la mano con los objetivos de desarrollo, de, objetivos de desarrollo que son fundamentales para el desarrollo de nuestros países. Sin esta tecnología no vamos a ser capaces de avanzar, de superar las grandes brechas tecnológicas que hay, las grandes brechas de desarrollo que tenemos con otros países. Así que esta cooperación creo que ha sido significativa y ojalá podamos avanzar hacia un proceso como el africano, en el cual hubo mucha más, eh, están trabajando muy bien. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Veronica Guilherme. Your inputs from Argentina. Thank you very much. I'm going to take the advantage of speaking in Spanish too, because I would like to be uh, to speak more accurately about this thing that is maybe uh, a question that is under negotiation between several countries, and maybe my English is not enough to to be to be so 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 accurate so accurate. So accurately. Um, eh, eh, me, me encuentro aquí eh, en representación de la presidencia pro tempore de Argentina en el marco de CELAC y eh, dentro, de ese, dentro de esa presidencia Argentina se ha propuesto eh, llevar en el plano espacial para CELAC un conjunto de propuestas y actividades que es lo que la presidencia pro tempore hace durante su, su mandato, ¿no? Y estamos trabajando desde el Ministerio de Ciencia y Tecnología junto con la Cancillería Argentina para eh, trabajar en esa propuesta. Pero que al final les puedo contar algunas ideas que, que hemos comenzado a delinear y que pensamos forma parte del proceso de negociación constitutivo que tiene la nueva agencia eh, espacial regional, digamos que es un proceso sumamente eh, necesario. Pero tomando eh, el, el eje de la, de la pregunta que se ha hecho al panel, me gustaría destacar que, en mi opinión, hay, hay dos drivers principales en el proceso constitutivo de una agencia regional. En primer lugar, que en la región existen 
una serie de planes na espaciales nacionales que tienen diversos niveles de desarrollo, algunos más avanzados, otros en estados más iniciales, pero que cada uno de ellos expresa la voluntad y la capacidad de cada país de lograr este, algo en el plano espacial, ¿no es cierto? Y en segundo lugar, creo que eh, está muy claro que el otro driver que va a modelar la conformación de una agencia espacial regional son las necesidades futuras de servicios basados en tecnología espacial que América Latina en los próximos años, sin duda, como todo el resto del mundo, va a consumir, va a comprar, va a adquirir. Entonces, si estos son los dos drivers, quizá nos conducen en la reflexión de hacia dónde debería ir una agencia espacial regional este, a, dos, a dos aspectos que son de, máxima, de la máxima relevancia. En primer lugar, la capacidad que tengamos de coordinar entre los planes espaciales nacionales y un plan espacial regional. En el sentido de que un plan espacial regional sea capaz de agregar valor a los planes espaciales regionales, pero especialmente sea capaz de lograr algunas cosas, de lograr algunos objetivos que individualmente los países no pueden lograr. Y eso, en un contexto de heterogeneidad, tiene diferentes este, soluciones ¿no? y requiere de una amplia y profunda discusión para convertir a la agencia efectivamente en una herramienta útil para el desarrollo regional, este, digamos, evitando, por supuesto, los organismos eh, meramente eh, administrativos, que seguramente no es la idea de esta agencia. Y en segundo lugar, digamos, en lo que tiene que ver con eh, los desafíos de la, de, de, de la región, seguramente este, en esto de poder hacer aquellas, de poder lograr algunos objetivos que los países individualmente no pueden lograr, este, seguramente la agencia pueda ser un, una herramienta para alcanzar o para atender algunos desafíos regionales, digamos, este, relevantes. En ese sentido, eh, digamos, en el marco de, de la presidencia pro tempore argentina, estamos proponiendo un, alguna agenda de trabajo para comenzar a discutir actividades que puedan este, dar, comenzar a dar contenido y conformar la agencia, ¿no es cierto? Se nos ocurría, en primer lugar, una, una reunión para poder discutir un planeamiento estratégico, una definición de objetivos, una, una forma de construir regionalmente un consenso que nos permita, este, digamos, avanzar y movernos en, en lo que tiene que ver con el, el futuro de la agencia, en primer lugar. En segundo lugar, se nos, digamos, Argentina, como contribución en, en el marco de su presidencia, está organizando en este momento alguna una actividad, especialmente de formación de posgrado, para invitar a... A, a, digamos, a miembros de los otros países de la región, digamos, en la que, en la que, puede, en, en la que podamos compartir nuestra experiencia, digamos, y la experiencia de los demás este, países en, en, en orden a formar recursos humanos de alto nivel para las agencias y los programas espaciales regionales. Y en tercer lugar, en esta próxima reunión que seguramente hará la agencia en algún momento, estamos proponiendo llevar un primer desafío regional que pueda ser atendido por la agencia, esto es atender una problemática, en nuestra propuesta un primer ensayo podía ser el emprendimiento de un este, satélite o de servicios de, provistos por un satélite orientados a, a prevenir, a mitigar y a adaptar a la región en, 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 frente a los efectos del cambio climático, lo que nos conduce a la construcción y operación de un satélite meteorológico regional. La, la América Latina es la única, una de las pocas regiones en el mundo que queda sin un satélite meteorológico regional propio. Quizá este ejercicio, digamos, acerca del de, este, desarrollo conjunto, empezar a imaginarnos el desarrollo conjunto de un satélite regional puede ser un buen ejercicio para poder comenzar a mostrar, en primer lugar, ambición en la agencia, en segundo lugar, el tipo de potencial y capacidades que hay que desarrollar, en tercer lugar, el impacto que pueda tener, no solo en la realidad este, de la agricultura, de la capacidad de hacer pronósticos, de la capacidad de mitigar el cambio climático, sino también en la, en la posibilidad de desarrollar la industria de la región. Este, en consecuencia, eh, digamos, el, 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 el punto que quería levantar aquí era compartir una reflexión acerca 
de, de, de los drivers que nos parece que están conformando el desarrollo de la agencia y una propuesta eh, en relación a eh, su, su creación. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Guillermo. Uh, Maria Nello. Thank you, Dr. Monsami. I have a presentation. Thank you very much. It is a pleasure and an honor to participate in the global conference on space for emerging countries. And I'm very grateful and also on behalf of our Secretary General, Mr. Jorge Hernando Pedraza, to International Astronautical Federation and the Sea Radio Foundation uh, for the kind invitation to share with you some thoughts about what the Andean community is and the role of this integration process in the regional level in the Americas. I was going to make this presentation in Spanish, but it's a good occasion to practice my English. So <laughs> thank you. So uh, please, the next slide. Thank you. OK, so the Andean community is made up of four member countries, Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, also intergovernmental bodies, organizations, and entities of civil society participation that comprises the Andean Integration System, SAI. Here we all find all the entities and bodies that are part of this institutional column of the Andean community, such as the Andean Court of Justice, and also the uh, Simon Bolivar Andean University located here in Quito, Ecuador, also the Andean Parliament located in Bogota, Colombia, of course the General Secretariat in Lima, and also uh, the political and legislative bodies as the Andean Council of Foreign Affairs and the Commission of the Andean Community. A very important aspect to remark here is the Andean Community Law. The Cartagena Agreement is our main treaty the one on which this integration process started. Also, the Court of Justice tre Creation Treaty that sells the rules for this jurisdictional body. A result of the application and execution of these, these primary laws, currently there have been issued 896 decisions, meaning Andean law, of the Andean Council of Foreign Affairs and the Commission of the Andean Community. So the main principles of this Andean community law are two, the direct application, meaning that there's no need to pass these laws by the national congresses, and the principle of supranationality, meaning the, uh, this Andean community law prevails over national law. Along these uh, 53 years of existence of the Andean community, we have achieved certainly very important goals, such as those in the area of physical integration, um, for instance, energy, transportation, and of course, telecommunications. Uh, one dynamic area of work is telecommunications, indeed, where we can find regional regulations and projects also as the Andean Satellites Registry and the Andean Satellite itself called SES-10, located at the Orbit Spectrum Resource 67 West at Andean Satellite Network, Simón Bolívar II, duly registered before ITU. So to summarize briefly among the main benefits uh, reached with this Andean satellite, we can find the reactivation of the Andean Spectrum Orbit um, resource after 40 years meaning the use of the Andean satellite network, Simón Bolívar II, in the position 67 degrees west, the conservation of a natural resource for the Andean community without any economic outlay for its member countries, the opportunity to have satellite services for non-commercial government activities and oriented to social connectivity projects and other uses that member countries desire upon also a training program for officials of member countries on satellite issues and the possibility of accessing a new orbital position. So to keep this Andean orbit position without any interference, we have a regional registry, we can see here, called Andean Satellite List, where after an administrative procedure, each geostationary satellite that provides services within the territory of Bolivia, Colombia, Ecuador, or Peru is registered on this list. 
the registration uh, in this Andean satellite list began to be implemented in December 2009 with issuance of resolution 1296. As a result of that, currently we have 66 satellites of 13 satellite operators registered to date, located in more than 50 different satellite orbits. Certainly our roadmap includes many challenges, not only for the four member countries, but all the region. All these challenges and activities are intended to improve the quality of life of Andean citizens in compliance with the Cartagena Agreement and the mandate of the member countries. Thank you. Thank you, Marinella, and thank you to the panelists for the opening remarks. Um, when I started off, uh, I reflected the difficulty at a political level. So maybe, Ambassador, if I can come back to you. The governance for a regional space program is going to be very, very critical to get consensus and agreement. And that's going to be a key success factor to the regional space agency. Do you foresee any challenges in the region around governance and how you manage? Thank you, yes. Uh, it's a very difficult uh, political for the construction of democracy and freedom of any actions for, for topics, all topics. The, the science um, space is very important and unique theme. Uh, the similar example, the synchrotron in Jordan, Jordania. Uh, the science, sciences for all countries of Middle, Middle West, um, job in projects. The similar experience is necessary for ALSE. The technical and science projects is more important for the region of the political decisions. The budget is very important. Well, the human capital, or recursos humanos, human resource, it's the capital important. It's a budget more, more important for the next generations. Now, the, the object and the goal is how structure this system or constellation or ecosystem of projects. I need mm, more, more of the, the decisions politic is more decision technicals and for development of countries for the combat to poor is the very important uh, no necessary decision politics is more science is more technical is more project is more academic is more companies is more action in this uh, in this test. now is what the difference of countries, a big countries, economic big countries, and another countries with small countries. This is the great, uh, the, the great goal for more e equality. And remember the experience of Europe or another regions for e e uh, uh, maybe uh, equilibrar, uh, buscar uh, equality for the countries. This is the great goal, equality countries for the technical and science priorities. Thank you, Ambassador. Um, I'm going to come back to you, Galerba, because you seem to be pushing in that direction. In the conversation thread that I picked up, there's a focus, but it's more on the sort of strategic intent point of view from for international of joint coll collaboration and cooperation, building human capital, looking at the application. In. But as I said, that's more on the strategic side. But you're talking about regional priorities. So if you had to set up a space policy for the region, why, why are you doing, what is the key policy drivers that's pushing you to collaborate from a regional priority perspective? Thank you, Val. Um, yo diría que el principal interés desde la perspectiva de mi país era eh, tratar de generar una cooperación regional que nos apoye a nosotros como país a desarrollar nuestro propio, eh, nuestra propia agencia espacial. 
lamentablemente eh, varias decisiones de gobiernos anteriores fueron minando la capacidad de, que tenía el Instituto Espacial Ecuatoriano hasta que finalmente lo desaparecieron. Lamento mucho decir esto y me da mucha pena como ecuatoriana, pero es importante decirlo, porque solo así, cuando reconocemos nuestros errores y nuestras vulnerabilidades, podemos ser capaces de, de eh, solicitar cooperación y, y pedir precisamente para fortalecer esas capacidades. Para el Ecuador es muy importante contar con un Instituto Espacial Ecuatoriano y nosotros contamos con todos ustedes para que nos apoyen en ese camino. Eh, y, y en ese sentido mi país apoyará todas las actividades que en el marco de la CELAC se desarrollen para que esta agencia tenga la capacidad y la fortaleza de apoyar a todos aquellos que no tenemos un instituto espacial. Y si me permites, nada más Val, quería corregirme, el quinto país que negoció el tratado fue Argentina. Lamento mucho no haberlo mencionado antes. Gracias. Gracias por esa respuesta. Guillermo, y es similar a la pregunta que he picado en Slido. Tú eres de CUNAE y desde la regional perspectiva es bastante maduro y avanzado. And if you look across the regional landscape, there are many countries, you know, from a technology maturity level point of view, there are countries at different levels. Um, so how do you see that playing in terms of, um, in the implementation phase of a regional space program, bringing that into the, uh, the narrative? Yeah, it's, it's, I think that this is a, a, a key a key, uh, very important question because the heterogeneity of of the of the stage of the different national uh, space development uh, plans uh, is is an issue. It's an issue, but it's an opportunity too. At the same time, because as Veronica said, <coughs> we can use the the regional agency agency in order to to support. Uh, and to and to to cooperate in, uh, uh, in, 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 in in between the members of the of the of the agency. I think that the same situation uh, uh, that there was in the in the in, in Europe when when they created the, the the ISA and even today not all the European countries has the same uh, the same the same grade of maturity. For, for its national uh, space uh, programs, not, and I think that this is a, an opportunity and a, an activity uh, uh, in order to, to create uh, the agenda of the of the of the regional agency. Thank you for that, Colerbo. Uh, um, Alejandro, you know, in your presentation, you talked extensively about what. Uh, the Paraguayan Space Agency is doing. Uh, I'm going to throw two questions at you. Uh, the first one, what do you foresee the role of the existing national space programs will be uh, in the regional space program? Um, so what, how do you see the Paraguayan Space Agency contributing uh, to the regional space program? And then the second question is, you are now the chair of the Administrative Committee for Developing Countries in emerging communities in, in the IF. And you, there's also a Latin American and Caribbean regional working group, which was um, sort of more or less consolidated yesterday. But how do you see the IAF helping you in this agenda as well? Great question. Uh, thank you very much. Well, um, the first one is uh, the Paraguay Space Agency is developing the, um, the space uh, probe and, and that we see is uh, this is a very big opportunity to many countries and like uh, the other members of the panel says there is a asymmetry in the developing in our in our in in our region uh, there are very mature uh, space programs and, and very uh, in intermediate space space program and also initial space program like a Paraguayan space agency uh, that I think uh, we need to take into consideration is we need to work together and we need to complement our 
uh, be complementary with other space uh, programs. Not uh, not compete. Not not do not doing the same thing. The same not pursuing the same the same technology. We if if Argentina, for example, has the technology developed, maybe we can we can collaborate and 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 learn from them. And if we are developing some kind of technology, we can share this knowledge. And I think this is a very big opportunity for the. Uh, Making a change with the second, question. I think this is a very big opportunity for the region and the the ACDCEC, the Administrative Committee on Developing Countries and Emerging Countries. And uh, it's a very big uh, platform that IAF is, is is putting together here, because uh, it, it allows us to share these uh, these plans uh, between all the countries, between all the the actors in in the region and and worldwide. And, and see how we can collaborate because there are many things that can be done, like we say we see before in the presentation, without investment, uh, just with uh, collaboration, with cooperation. And let me uh, s finish with this. I think with uh, international cooperation and collaboration, we can divide the cost and the risks and multiply the benefits and opportunities for our countries. Thank you. Thanks, Alejandro. And Marinella, in your presentation, you talked about the uh, integration of the Andean community, uh, and you talked about all the legislation and integration from that perspective. Um, in this in intervention, there's also the Caribbean region as well that's not actually represented here. What measures are being taken to ensure that they're not left out of the conversation as you move forward? I'm going to switch to Spanish, <laughs> so you can practice your Spanish too. <laughs> Thank you. Eh, sí, eh, muchas gracias, doctor. Eh, ciertamente, eh, si bien nosotros nos manejamos en el ámbito subregional andino, no de los cuatro países, hay que tener en cuenta dos temas interesantes. Uno, tenemos países miembros asociados, que en este caso son los países de eh, Mercosur y Chile, un poco para tener en cuenta la foto completa. ¿no? La comunidad andina al final del día no son solo cuatro países, sino que veamos la foto de toda América del Sur. Y también miramos hacia una convergencia latinoamericana. De hecho, eh, yo les puedo hablar rápidamente en dos temas, no solamente eh, telecomunicaciones y los temas específicos espaciales, sino incluso en energía. Si sí tenemos planes y proyectos de convergencia, con eh, América Central, también con, con este Centroamérica, con Centroamérica, con el Caribe, eh, tenemos acercamientos con eh, CARICOM, entonces sí hay un interés eh, concreto en articular estas acciones, ¿no? Evidentemente, y es algo que siempre reforzamos siempre, ¿qué ventaja nos ofrece el proceso de integración andino? Que eh, como señalamos hace un momento, tenemos esta institucionalidad y este conjunto de normas que son supranacionales, no pasan por los congresos, que esto ya es una ventaja per se, ¿no? Y también es posible que otros países, como los que ya mencionamos, asociados, u otros países de Centroamérica o el Caribe que deseen adherirse, por ejemplo, a nuestros tratados andinos, tengan pues esta facilidad para hacerlo y de esta manera articular acciones. Entonces, sí, hay un objetivo eh, andino que es la convergencia latinoamericana, sin duda. Th thanks for that, Marinella. Um, so, as you move forward in terms of implementing a regional space program, one of the critical elements that supports that is going to be infrastructure. Okay. Uh, so, maybe, um, Guillermo, from your perspective, how do you s foresee the infrastructure base needed for this regional space program being playing out across the region? You know, we're talking about ground stations, data segments, satellites, and so on. Uh, who's going to host what? Uh, is, is, are there any specific principles you're going to be looking at? Because Kunai is leading, and there's a few other space agencies in the region are leading. But as I said, from a maturity level perspective, there are others that are still trying to play catch up. But then you have to m ensure there's equity in the region as well. Yeah, of course, uh, Argentina and every country has uh, different uh, segment of the 
uh, special infrastructure in the ground segment uh, or in the in the application development or in the several parts of the uh, of the spatial infrastructure we have uh, several uh, we have capabilities uh, distributed in, in in the countries but I think that if we think the the, the challenge in the in the regional level we must uh, focus uh, our interest in maybe three pillars. The first one, uh, the human resources development. We need to, to create a critical mass for the region. I said in the previous panel that even Argentina at this moment have a great constraint in the human resources uh, side. And the region, I think, that is in the same situation. Um, we need to to, to recognize and to analyze very well our industrial uh, our, our industrial capabilities because uh, in a regional program program we must uh, spinning in m some of these companies uh, attracting them to work in the in the space industry and and there are companies uh, in in America Latina that can do it and and finally I think that we we, we must increase uh, the cooperation in in the side of the of the research and development programs because again all of the our country have all of the country have maybe with some country we have uh, bilateral, bilateral bilateral cooperation uh, co cooperation programs but in this case we can uh, undertake some kind of new regional cooperation programs uh, in research and development uh, um, activities. And I think that uh, in order to develop the, the, its own infrastructure, we can work in, in these three levels. Th thank you for that. Uh, Veronica, are you the Regional Integration Director in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs? Um, the key question is, how are you going to ensure that there's gender parity in the regional space program? It's a difficult question. Um, I, I would like to say uh, that one of the main objectives that we had when we were negotiating the, the treaty, the ALCE, um, it was to include the gender um, approach. Um, because we, we believe that it's important to change minds regarding science and technology, the, the participation of girls and women in science and technology. I think th this is one, one of the, uh, the main gaps that we have in Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, I think it's difficult to ensure, but I believe that many of the uh, regional mechanism, mechanisms um, now we are working on the uh, gender approach. For example, in the Andean community um, that e Ecuador now has the presidency, the rotating presidency of the Andean community, we are working in projects um, for develop of entrepreneurs uh, leading by women or uh, composed by, by women. Um, and also we are trying to have the same level of representation in our meetings uh, in the Andean community, but it still is, is a way to, to, to follow. And of course, I think the most important thing is to have the, um, the commitment of men and women to include this issue in all fields of our work. Thank you. Thanks, Barack. I think we're running more or less out of time, but I'm just gonna ask one more question. Um, Maybe to you, Alejandro. Um, in the earlier panel discussions with the heads of agency, you know, there are a few of the agencies that are members of the European Space Agency. Um, do you think the model for the European Space Agency, or ESA, could work here? And just to make sure we understand the context, the ESA model operates on a just retour principle. You put in a certain amount of funding as contribution, and you extract out uh, contractual value back to your country. 
from a financial modeling perspective, uh, is that appropriate or do we need to go another route? Um, this question. I think the um, Latin America can be the own model. Uh, we can learn about uh, the European uh, Space Agency process, but I am sure that maybe our we, we need to, to develop our own model is uh, regarding our 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 reality and also learn from the African region uh, process. Uh, the good things to start later is there are many lessons learned that we can apply to improve our, our model developing. And uh, the, like I said before, there are many things that we can do. Uh, and let me share that one thing, one more uh, last thing. And yesterday, after the, the LAC uh, meeting, we, we have a conversation with Carlos Moura here from the Brazilian Space Agency, with Pilar Zamora and Juan Jaramillo, and we uh, agreed uh, to develop a workshop in July. And it's an it's a, it's a outcome of, 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 of this kind of work that we can do. It can't be done without any investment. In between, we develop and build our regional space agency. Thank you. Thank you very much for that response. I'm going to close off with two very uh, philosophical quotations, and they both come from the African perspective. The one that says that if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Okay. And I think this is essentially the stepping stone uh, into, into a regional space program. The other uh, saying, and I think it goes very, uh, it's core to the building of human capital and expertise and indigenous capabilities in, in the continent, that if you, if you give a person a fish, you only feed them for that day. But if you teach them how to fish, you feed them for the life. Okay. So I think this particular conversation is a start of a new journey for the, the region. But I think it's pushing in the right direction. So I think we're all kind of amazed and, uh, and holding thumbs that this is going to be a, an excellent endeavor. So five, ten years from now when we're having the same conversation, it's going to be a very different conversation. So thank you to the panelists. Thank you.